All you need is your iPad and a copy of Illustrator for the iPad. Let's go, it's really easy. Let's make a bear logo now and I'm going to be using triangles and circles. I've got my page up in here, mine is 1920 by 1920 pixels, but you can do any size you like, it doesn't matter. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by finding the triangle tool. Now, although we say triangle and it's got a picture of a triangle on the tool, when you click and drag to make your triangle shape, you'll find that you can actually change the number of sides by just dragging up and down on this little um, circle with the two arrows on the right hand side. So it should really be called the polygon tool. Up the top there is a little circle and if I click and drag on that circle I can round off the corners on my shape. So this is going to be the top of the bear's head over there and this will be sort of its paws around the, the child bear. So let's move that up. By the way the colour doesn't matter at all at the moment. I'm going to make a copy of that, so I've clicked on the duplicate button and I'm going to pull the duplicate down and I'll just resize it, make it a little bit smaller over there. So something along that line in there. Now before I go any further I want to reuse the shape later on so I'm going to duplicate it and just move the copy out to the side. So if I select both of those shapes I can then go across to my align options and I can choose to align them and while I'm in this area I'll then go up um, a few panels and I'm looking for the combine shapes panel and I will use minus front and convert to path and that gives me the basic shape for, for the bear. Let's zoom in a bit over here. To do the ears we're going to do circles really easy this one so let's go and find the uh, the circular tool over there and I'm going to click and drag to make a circle. If you hold down the uh, the center touch you'll get a perfect circle in there. And I'm going to move that across over to there. Now I want to copy on the other side so I'm going to click on the uh, duplicate button and move this across and I'm going to hold down the center touch so that you can see as I'm moving it, it doesn't matter as I go up and down, it will move it absolutely horizontally to the other one. So I think we'll take those in a little bit like that and this one here can go in just a fraction over there. I'm not worrying too much about getting this absolutely perfect. If you want you can set up a guide and grids and, and get it perfect yourself. So <clears throat> I'm going to take those now, select them both and I'm going to go once again over to my um, options for combining the shapes and I'm just going to say combine all and convert to path. So what about the little ears for the small bear? Well what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do exactly the same thing but I want to do it in a slightly different way so you can see problems you might have. I'm going to take the, the smaller bear, smaller bear's ears over there and I'm going to move that across to there. Let's give that a different color so it's obvious what I've done and I'm going to make a copy of that so I'll duplicate that. But you could try this a different way. Rather than actually duplicating it and moving across, what we could do instead is if you select this, you could go over here to the repeat option and you could mirror it. Now when you're mirroring it, if you click on this little circle, you can then just move it across into exactly the right position and it means that if the size was wrong on this, you might go in, you might adjust the size, and they'll both adjust at the same time. Once again, I can also move one, and the other one will move together. So I think I'll just move that down just a fraction, like so. Now, if you want to cut, because I want to take those two shapes and cut them out from the back bear shape, I'm going to go up here, and before I do any cutting, I'm going to say, I want to expand that shape. Now, why won't you let me expand? Well, I need to select it again so they're both selected and then I can go in here and I can choose expand. Now that I've expanded them, I'm going to do what I did before, but I want to show you the problem. So I select those objects and I'm going to go up to my combine shapes options and I'm going to say minus the front object 
And look at that. You see, when it gets rid of them, it actually does it with a square, not the circle. So let me undo that. I'll just use two fingers to undo. The reason that happens is because these shapes here have been expanded from their um, mirroring uh, area. And if you have a look in the layers, and I go to that group, you'll see that they're actually a clipping group. And in there is a clipping group path or a clipping path. And that path there is square. So what we have to do is, it's not doing anything really, is we have to just delete that square, go in here into the other ear and delete that one as well. Now it doesn't matter that they're in a group. I can select all three of those objects, go once again down to my combined shapes, and I can then minus the front shape from the back shape and convert to path and it'll be all well. Now we need a, a nose and um, a jowls or whatever they are for the for the large bear and that's why I've got this one here because I'm going to make it a lot smaller but unfortunately you can see as I'm making it smaller the little circles are changing so I might have to adjust those circles as well. So I'm looking for a kind of a shape like that and I could just adjust that circle in there until I get the size and the shape that I'm after. Right, I'm happy with that. Let's see kind of what it will look like if I move it across onto the bear. So can't see it at all, I suppose. Let's try a different color. And so that's sort of the shape that I'm after in there. But I want to put a nose in there and the little um, split that goes between the nose and the mouth. So to do that, let's undo that a bit. Let's zoom in a bit to here. I'm going to use a circle over here and I'll use more of an elliptical shape really than a, a perfect circle which I'm going to put in there. Same again, let's just make it visible. So that's going to go in over there and then once again we'll just use a little rectangle in here to draw in the kind of the split area between those two. I'm going to select all three, go over to the align option and just align them centrally. And then while I'm here, also up to my option to minus the front object from the back, so it's minus front in there, and convert to path. And there it is, that will be the, the nose of the main bear. I'm going to center align that once again with that. And same thing, if I select both of those, I can then go in and I can just minus the front object from the back. So let's choose minus front over there and convert to path. Okay, we're getting there. We just need some eyes and the little bear's um, eyes and nose as well. So I can use the circular tool. I'm going to click and drag to make a small eye over here. I'm holding down my touch control and Let's have a look and see if this one will be the right size. I'm going to zoom right in. I kind of like the idea of sort of smaller eyes for this uh, for the big bear. So we've got one over there. You can duplicate them exactly the same as you did with the ears. And I will duplicate that one and move it across whilst holding down the center. There. Select both of those finally go over here to the uh, <coughs> minus front option sorry lost my voice there for a second and minus the front and convert to path in there now for the um, the child bear pretty much the same thing but without the whole jowl thing going on so I'm going to use a circle make the nose it's a nice easy one and then two eyes to go in there one eye like that holding down the center to make it a perfect circle and we'll just move that into the right position and duplicate that and move the duplicate across to the right place um, I didn't check that this was in the center, so I'm just going to select both of those. 
So I'll select that and those, not the eyes, but just those ones, and go across to my align option and just check that it is centered. And um, once again, I can just move my eyes around a little bit until they align. I might move that across a bit like so. Okay, I'm going to select all of those and make it black and get rid of my stroke. So none for the stroke and a black fill over there. I'm going to select all of those objects and once again I'm going to just group them together. So this little item down here, I'll click on that to group them. And that means that if I move one, they'll all move around at the same time. Likewise, if I scale, they'll all scale together. And I want to draw in my shape to go around the outside. Now I'm going to use once again the rectangle. You know, let's just draw a rectangle in there. I'm going to hold down the center to get a perfect square and just round off the corners like so. And I'd like that to just be a stroke and I'm going to increase the stroke weight down here to make it a little bit thicker to tie in with the rest of the feel of that graphic. Now, if I selected all of those, I can then go along to my align. Because I've grouped the bear together, it'll treat it as one shape. So when I align centrally, it will take all of those items and they will all move relative to each other. Now, one of the things you might be thinking about is why have I continued to cut things out? Why didn't I just use white shapes in there? Well, the reason I did that was because it gives me so much more flexibility. I'm going to take this shape and I'm going to move it right the way underneath that group. So in my um, layers option, I'm going to pull it down so it's underneath the group. And then you can see if I now go to my fill, I can then fill that with any color I like. And I've then got that color coming through on the bear. So we can just choose whatever we wish for that final graphic. But I'm going to choose none in there. I hope you enjoyed the course. Please like and subscribe for more of the same. If you'd like a free month of Skillshare and my courses are on Skillshare, just look at the description below. See you in the next one.